God needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures. Fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing. For the glory of the risen King. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned unclean how marvelous how wonderful am my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my Savior's love for me he took my sins 
in my sorrows he made them his very own he bore the burdens to calvary and suffered and died alone he took my sins and my sorrows he made them his very own he bore the burdens to calvary and suffered and died alone how marvelous how wonderful am my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my Savior's love marvelous how wonderful am my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my Savior's love for me glory his face I at last shall see this will be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me how marvelous how wonderful am my song shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my Savior's love for me how marvelous how wonderful am my song shall ever be how marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. You may be seated. <clears throat> Let us pray. Our Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity that you give us to come to the house to worship. Father, we pray that this morning that we just come and open our hearts to receive the blessing and the message that has been prepared for us today, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for each one that's here, Father, and we pray as we leave here today we'll have gained a great spiritual blessing and that we can apply it to our lives and to the lives of others. Lord, this morning we come with thankful hearts, Father, for the many, many blessings that you give us every day. Lord, we just praise you in, in advance for all the good things that you do, Lord. We're so unworthy, Lord, of so much of your goodness, Lord, but we thank you for these things that I pray. Amen. I'd like to take this time to uh, welcome everyone this morning. We have a lot of, as Mr. Strickland would say, I see a lot of wood out there, but anyway, a lot of people are in a lot of different places, uh, but we're thankful that you are here. Uh, always it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Our announcements this morning, the flowers are given in love and memory of Herschel and Pearl Phillips McKay, Charlene and Kathy. The regular scheduled business meeting will be rescheduled to next Sunday at 6 p.m. The observance of the Lord's Supper will also be rescheduled for next Sunday. Also next Sunday we will have a, a service of baptismal for Leah Bellflowers and others who may come. We are still receiving pledge cards for the next six months. Please continue to be faithful and to build uh, on this building. Let me just add a little bit to this while we're talking and I have an opportunity. Um, if you'll look on the back of your uh, bulletin, you will see uh, that we only have 23 pledge cards turned in. 
please, and we have, we have 55 turn, that are out, so please, if you've got a pledge card, just, you can just turn it in, but, but the pledges are not due until December. You have a long time to, if you decide that you want to pledge, so, but we need to know basically where we're, going, where we're going to be at in December, so please turn your pledge cards in. Already, um, the pledges have been $22,920. Um, pledges paid already is $3,820. And our building fund continues to grow up a little bit. We've got to uh, move it on up, $264,000. So please, let's stay faithful to our building fund and, and get, uh, watch this funds grow. Please remember our nominating committee as they are doing uh, their work for the next year. Pastor Ms. Strickland will be away through Tuesday, and Cheryl told us it would not be Sunday, it would be Tuesday when they got back. So um, if you need any assistance, please, you can call me. <clears throat> please sign up in the back hall if you are interested in going to Mike's Farm in Beulahville on Friday, December 8th for an evening of fun, food, fellowship, music, and hayride. Uh, we pay, pay, please pay Kathy Perez $44 per ticket, no later than today. We will leave at 12.30 p.m. and we'll return around 9 p.m. Also on next Sunday, our youth will be sharing their experience from Camp Champ. Uh, this summer during the morning worship service, uh, please come as we also have the Lord's Supper and Baptism. So we have a full Sunday next, uh, next week with baptismal. Uh, the Camp Champ will have the Lord's Supper, so it's a full, full so Mr. Strickland's coming back to a full, full schedule. Um, also, the Youth Council will meet next Sunday afternoon at 5 p.m. Okay. Psalms 96.4 says, The Lord is great and worthy to be praised. We continue our worship this morning by singing hymn number 140, Down by the Cross, Standing Please.
<laughs> okay, we now have uh, our pastor's pal, Cindy. Cindy, oh, Ron is going to Ron is going to do it. So, children, come on down. Come on down. Okay. Come right here. Just sit down right there. Am I on? Am I talking loud enough? All right. I told uh, I told the guys up real own voice. I'm a loud mouth, so I said I gotta you gotta watch me. I'll send it out pretty good. So the last time we talked, I talked about the microphone. And how God doesn't need a microphone. I need a microphone, but God doesn't need a microphone. Today, I want to talk about the cameras. Do y'all know that we have four cameras? Huh? Zach can actually run the cameras. When I come out here early in the morning, Zachary actually runs the cameras and plays with them. You do play with them. <laughs> But he's learned a lot about the cameras. We have four cameras, and they are, one is in the back back here, and number two is over here, and number three is over here, and then we have one over here on the side, number four, that doesn't move. That's for when we don't know what we're doing. We can go to number four right quick and get out of trouble. Uh, let's talk about the cameras a minute. Do you guys know that... April, I come home the weekend, Mother's Day. I was in China. You remember that. That's all the way on the other side of the world. Do you know that by those cameras right there that I saw Mingo Baptist Church and the services, and I saw every one of you while I was in China, did you know that I could see where you're smiling or you're not smiling, if you're happy or if you're not happy? I could see that. I saw slime being put on our pastor. I saw that. Almost immediately when it was happening, Patrick sent it to me. Now, there's a group of people up there that y'all don't need to see much. Give me a shot up there, and I want to see you guys up there in the top. Look at me, Jackson. <laughs> Jackson is actually running the cameras. He's got, a, he's got a, a selector switch there, and he can go from camera to camera and a wand, and he can direct those cameras all around and zoom in. Leslie is in the middle and he's running the uh, actual the sound and uh, video. And, and Patrick's on the side over there and Patrick is running what you see on the screens. There's a lot going on up there. I don't know if you guys know just how much work goes on. And this stuff, like I said a while ago, is going all over the world. I know of people in the past in Afghanistan that has been watching our services. So there's a ministry going on right there, and we got a lot of stuff going on. But this is Pastor's Pals. I wanted to do a little advertising. And oh, by the way, we're stre no, we're not streaming. It's recorded, right? If you look on your bulletin, www.mingobaptistchurch.com, I don't know what, you can actually see on the Internet every one of our services. Can you believe that? It's something. A lot of technology, a lot of stuff goes on in this little church. Wednesday night when they were at Camp Champ, they had a service at Camp Champ on Wednesday night, and I took my telephone and hooked my telephone up to the television down there, and we watched the service live in the Sunday school class down there. Amazing. Amazing what's going on. All that stuff, did you know that we can see a lot of stuff? I can see you all over the world. I can see what's going on because of this technology. But do you know that God can see us without the camera? He sees everything we do. You don't hide anything from God. Guess what he wants? We talked about it in the Sunday school this morning. He told Moses that he had all these things for him to do. And, and Moses told him and said, pick somebody else. Not me. I can't do it. God has given us a job. We are, this is a big word, I've been telling my wife about these big words I'm starting to use. We are his liaison. Ooh, that's a big one, ain't it? Beverly Warren, big 
glad to hear me talk like that. She tried to teach me English when I was a kid. <laughs> that word means that we are his representative. We, God chose us to represent him all over the world. Me, you, he picked us. He could have picked all kind of people and all kind of things, but he picked you to represent him. And he's watching. And he sees everything you do. So when we stand up and we have praise music and we sing, God's excited about that because you know why we're doing that? We're singing praises to our God Jesus and his son Jesus Christ. He's excited about that. Are you excited about that? That's what he expects. So today, remember, God is watching. The reason we're here today is one reason. We've come here to worship. We've come here for our Savior. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much that you loved us enough to send your Son, that you loved us enough to give us eternal life. Father, give us a burden that we may long to see souls saved. Father, we feel like that we're coming into the days that you tell us about in your last days. You tell us that the, wheel, the fields are white with the harvest, but the laborers are few. God, burden us for lost souls. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, God. Oh, these are my grandkids, by the way. <laughs> Let us continue to excite God by singing hymn number 138 at Calvary. Standing, please. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we're just so thankful to be in your house this morning. Lord, now as Mr. Hughes comes and delivers the message, Lord, we just ask that you just bless him, Lord, and let us listen with open minds and attentive ears. Now as we accept these tithes and offerings, I pray that you will bless the gifts that we're about to receive. In your name we do pray and ask. Amen.
ready to go with uh, with the uh, the special disc track two. pain every year there's a God who's been faithful to me and you when my strength was all gone when my heart had no song still in love he's proved faithful promise is true what I thought was impossible I see my God do sing it I could not pray Still my God Has proved faithful To me The days I'd spent All so selfishly Reaching out For those things that pleased me Still my God has been faithful to me every time I came back to him uh, he's been waiting with open arms and I see once again Sing it, ladies.
Thank you. Thank you. That was beautiful. <clears throat> we, Mr. Hughes and Margaret are, are frequent visitors to our church because they are personal friends of Mr. and Ms. Strickland. And I'll tell you a little bit about that. But first of all, we welcome Mr. H Reverend Hughes this morning and his wife, Margaret. They are originally now from Salemburg. I was under thinking they were still in Rocky Mount, but they do live in Salemburg. Originally Rocky Mount, right. And Margaret told me this morning that she shot with me in Clinton. And that's something I, do, I don't, don't remember when I was down at the plant place. But anyway, the uh, Reverend Hughes will be bringing our morning message uh, in the absence of Mr. Strickland. And we pray for you, Mr. Uh, Hughes, as you uh, come this morning and speak uh, what's on your heart. But a little, little stuff about him. Lewis and Cheryl, they're personal friends of Lewis Cheryl. They grew up in the same town. Uh, they've done everything together. They played in the band together. They, they played sports together. Uh, they've just been uh, lifelong friends, and they continue to, uh, to be friends. And he just, Mr. Hughes just told me that he lived about one block away from Mr. Hughes. So any of those that went to Mr. Strickland's old home place, Ron, I know you did, and I did. Uh, so we basically know about where you live. So anyway. He lived on the point. Okay, <laughs> the point, okay. But anyway, we welcome you this morning, and we give you this time to use as you see uh, need. And the ladies, okay, I'm sorry. Here they go. I will 
trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Very good, very good. I'd like to share some things with you. First of all, I need to ask, who's got a watch with an alarm on it, please? Anybody got a watch with an alarm? I don't carry a watch. But... All right, well, if you've got a watch with an alarm on it, set that thing for 3 o'clock. Don't let me go a minute beyond, okay? Brother Earl told you that we grew up with Cheryl and, and uh, Lewis. Uh, we didn't call him Reverend in high school, but they didn't call me Reverend in high school. They just called me when something went wrong. And uh, my dad was a pastor and a church planter. Uh, my grandfather was a church planter and a pastor. And I ran for a number of years. I, I went a different direction until until God caught up with me. And so now I'm a pastor and have been a church planner. So uh, please bear with me. Pray for me. The Bible is a big book. And there are a lot of scripture in that book. We'll cover about a third of them. No, we won't. Listen, how many of you like a good mystery story? A good mystery. All right, now I grew up in an era when mysteries were Perry Mason. We won't go any further than that, but Perry Mason started filming in 1958. And I was around, had been around for a number of years by then, but Perry Mason was a good one. Agatha Christie. Anybody read Ag Agatha Christie and find out how she finds out what's going on? Well, we're going to talk about a, a mystery writer today. Uh, this mystery writer is one of the, the founders and one of the, 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 the principal authors of the faith which Jesus Christ gave to his church. Now, Paul is his name, and Paul was called, you know, from a background where he was a hunter. He was a hitman for the Sanhedrin in, in Jerusalem. Hitman. It was his job to go and find, he was a, he was a lawyer, he had uh, been trained under Gamaliel, and he, it was his job to go and find those nasty, awful followers of the way. Who am I talking about? Christians. They were not called Christians yet. But his job was to go and find these people, arrest them, try them on the spot, Convict them and do what? Kill them. He was happy with that. He loved his job. He, he loved it more than a lot of people today love their jobs. But he, in, in one trip to Damascus, to find, and he had been given a special authority to round up all he could find, and in that trip to Damascus, of course, he was struck on the road to Damascus and Jesus himself appeared to him and told him he was doing wrong. He says, why are you persecuting me? Paul says, I'm not persecuting you. I'm persecuting the ones that are following you. And Jesus said, when you persecute my church, you persecute me. And so Paul obeyed Christ. And he came to love Christ. And he, and he went and he studied for 11 years to do Christ's bidding. Well, today I would like to share just one small group of Scripture with you from the book of Colossians in the first chapter. If you would like to go there, because we're going to go back and, and look, at the, look at the... We're going to repeat the main theme here several times during our talk this morning, but it's Colossians, the first chapter, verses 26 
and 27. Colossians 1, verse 26 and 27. Now I'll go back to 24 so that we can work into it. 24th verse of the first chapter of Colossians. Paul is writing and he says, Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. He recognizes the church. He loves the church. He loves Christ. And then he says, Whereof I am made a minister of this church of Christ, according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery, here's that mystery, even the mystery which hath been hid from the ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. There's that mystery. To whom God would make known what is the riches of glory of this mystery among Gentiles, which is Christ in you. Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let me read that one more time. Just the 27th verse. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ, in you the hope of glory. Would you pray with me, please? Father, today as we seek to find this mystery, to seek to look into this mystery, Father, and, and see the hope of glory that Paul is stating to the rest of the church, Lord, we just ask that you would enter our hearts today and make that hope of glory, Father. Just We, we make that hope of glory just the foremost of our being and, and just know that when we leave this world, that that hope of glory is our future. And Lord, we just ask that it... it contain us and that it lead us on and that it spark us, Father, to renew our faith and renew our commitment to Christ. And Father, we'll give you the praise and the glory for all that you accomplish today. For it's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen and amen. Listen. Paul says that there's a mystery in the times of the Gentiles. We saw that uh, uh, in Romans 11.25. Let's see if I can find that. Oh yeah. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. He's telling the church at Colossae that the Jews in Israel in Israel don't understand this mystery, this hope of glory that's coming, this mystery that they've been told about, but they don't understand because, why don't they understand? Because they don't know Christ. Christ is our hope of glory. He tells them that in this very first, this first little bit of scripture. And then Romans 16, 25, he says, there's a mystery of the age of grace. Age of grace? Well, that was begun by Christ, wasn't it? Christ was the beginning of grace because he stood our place on the cross of Calvary. Romans 16, 25 tells us, Now to him that is of, is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to this revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Paul says it's been a secret forever and now boom here's the mystery the mystery is the hope of glory anyone who knows Christ this morning knows that hope of glory knows the hope that's brought by the faith in Jesus Christ and the joy that's brought to your soul and your heart through knowing Christ and doing his bidding that's the hope and it brings about that hope of glory there was a young man sitting in a service one night in a revival and, and the, the evangelist stood up and he says, uh, now we've got a good crowd here. How many of you want to go to heaven? Everybody raised their hand, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you raise your hand if, if, you, if, the, if I asked you this morning if you wanted to go to heaven? So one little guy sitting on the back row, little fella, 
And so the evangelist was, was really confounded here. He, he didn't know what to do. And so he, he asked him again. He says, come on now, answer me. Does, do, does anybody want, does everybody want to go to heaven? And the hands went up and, except the one little guy on the back row. And he says, Tommy. He knew his time, name was Tommy. No, no can I hope. He says, Tommy, I just asked the question, do you want to go to heaven when you die? Well, Tommy looked up. He says, well, sure I do. He said, well, why didn't you raise your hand? He says, I thought you were getting up a crowd to go right now. The hope of glory. That's, Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. How about that hope of glory? The abundant life. The abundant life that only Jesus Christ can bring you. It's a mystery of the age of grace. Uh, and then the third time, he says, it's a mystery, mystery of the coming rapture. 1 Corinthians 16, 51 tells us, uh, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. When Jesus left the upper room, he had told them about, I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare that place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye shall be also. Jesus told them, you might not make it until I get out the door. You might have a heart attack. Or you might live to be an old man like John. Or you might live forever because I'll come back before you die. Whatever the reason, Jesus said, I'm coming to receive you unto myself. Now see, those who die before we do, they will, they will prevent, they will, they will go in the twinkling of an eye before we do. Can you imagine the clouds on that day? If it's not an overcast day, it'll be just as dark because of all the saints who have been raptured up. Can you imagine that? What a beautiful day that's going to be. I've heard people tell me for years, well, when I know it's coming, then I'll give my life to Christ. Friend, you won't know when it's coming. Jesus himself said, I'm coming like a thief in the night. The thief doesn't call you up and say, uh, excuse me, are you going to be home at 1030? Would you step out into the front yard while I go in the back door and steal your blind? That's not what a thief does, does he? Thief comes quietly on tiptoe, and tiptoes in, does his, does his thing, and gets out. Well, you see, all of those are mysteries, the mysteries that come, the mystery of, of Agatha Christie and Nero Wolfe and Perry Mason and all of those things. Columbo, whoa. That brought it up a couple of years, didn't it? But that's still back 40 years ago. The greatest mystery of all is that the 26th verse of our scripture, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages. Hmm. Never been revealed to Israel. Never been revealed to the Jews. And now Paul says, you know what the mystery is because you've seen Jesus, you've heard of Jesus, we can tell you of Jesus, we can evangelize, and we can, we can take you places in His name. And He's going to be right on top of that. It's been hidden in the Old Testament. And now... He says, I give you this mystery of Christ. This mystery of the hope of glory, but I give it to you because you have Christ within you. And that Christ within you turns out to be your hope for glory. Hope of glory. Wow. Well, there are three, three hopes that we can have. And let's, let's look at three hopes really quickly this morning. I don't hear any alarms yet, so we'll, we'll continue on. We have a false hope. Remember that. That's on the outline. That's A. Have a false hope. B would be no hope. Ooh. That's the second kind of hope. And then that third hope is the hope of glory. Let me get through the first two first so I can spend the afternoon on three. I'll also tease you a little bit today. But this is, this is a hope. This is serious. This is a happy thing. Okay? The false hope we read in 1 Corinthians 15 uh, through 19. 
or 15, verse 19, I'm sorry. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. You see, the one thing that Jesus didn't tell us is that we were going to get rich because we knew him, that we were going to all become popular because we know him, that we're all going to have just people gathering around us and following us around because we know him. He didn't say that, did he? Because Jesus had a mission here. His mission was not to, not to be born in Bethlehem. His mission was not to, to heal the, the lame and, to, and to, to raise the sick and to give new life to those, his, even Lazarus. That's not his mission. His mission was not to teach. His mission was not to, 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 to uh, uh, tell people. His mission was not to heal the, the lady who touched the hem of his garment or anything. His mission, he only had one mission here. One mission, and that was to die for our sin on the cross of Calvary. God sent him to die in our place. You see, God loved us so much. God loved us so much that He gave all that was, that was important to Him. He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever, now I spell whosoever, A-L-L, that whosoever believeth in Jesus should not be perish, should not perish or be drawn away from or discontinue relationship with God, but that we would have everlasting life. And Paul knew this, and he told them, this is, the, this is the revealing of the mystery. It's no longer a mystery. But it's a false hope to think that you're going to profit from being a follower of Christ. You don't do that. There is no profit in following Christ. It's a tough life. It's a tough life. People re rebuke you and speak out against you and, and call you names and, and, and sometimes they'll chop your head off. It's going on right now in the Mideast. They're chopping Christians' heads off. Why? Because they're Christians. In Englewood, Colorado, a few years ago, two kids came in with guns into a high school out there, Littleton, Colorado. I went to school in Englewood, next door to it. But uh, the, the thing was that they came in with machine guns and, and Uzis and MAC-10s and all this other stuff and walked into the library and the cafeteria and started killing people. Now, when they got to this one little girl, God bless her, this one little girl, the guy looked at her and said, do you believe in God? And she says, yes, I do. Yes, I do. The last word she spoke, the last breath she took, because he shot her. There have been many martyrs over the years, so God doesn't tell us. You know, she didn't get rich. She didn't get a, a, a big, beautiful car or a big house on the lake. She didn't get any of that. She got persecuted and prosecuted and executed right there by someone who did not have her beliefs. So, uh, you see, we, we, have, we have others who have faith in money. The, the young, rich young ruler, you remember, came to Jesus, rich young ruler, and he said, what must I do to be saved? I've got all that the world can give me. Everything I have that the world can give me, I've got, but I don't have Jesus. Now, Jesus could have told him, well, all you have to do is tell me you love me more than that. And repent of the sins that you probably committed, gaining all of that. He didn't tell him all that. He says, go sell all of your assets. Give to the poor and come follow me. Well, I'm sure that before he got through with that one sentence, the young man had already turned him off. The glaze came over the eyes. He got that thousand-yard stare. And he stopped listening right then and there. But he knew that he loved his money more than he loved this Jesus. You see, some people's hopes are in money. Many are like that. They make money 
They're God. There are a lot of people out there that you know them. You run into them every day. Every day. Somebody asked Nelson Rockefeller, or not Nelson Rockefeller, but John D. Rockefeller one time, how much money is enough for you? The man couldn't, couldn't spend all of the money that he had. And they asked him, how much money do you need? And he said, just one more dollar. One more dollar. And after that, just one more dollar. And after that one, just one more dollar. In other words, he was going to one dollar the world into his pocket. And then that wouldn't be enough. There are a lot of people out there that, that don't have enough now of a lot of different things. Um, get a little fall off on the ear here. You see, it's not in your money. It's not in your intellectual abilities or educational abilities. Uh, there, there are people who, who can study all their lives, have, all, have a closet full of doctorate degrees, and, 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 all, and, and be smart as a whip and have all that the world offers. But guess what? There's no hope of heaven in any of that. There's only way, only one way that we have the hope of heaven. That hope of heaven is gained through faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You see, earthly gain will not be a comfort to those on the day that we're rise, raised up. That's, that's no hope. There is no hope for people that don't know Christ and won't listen to cry. You see, in 1 Thessalonians 4.13, Paul contrasts, he contrasts this hope and death. He says, uh, uh, let's see, 1 Thessalonians, but I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. And they, asleep was a way that they talked about people being dead. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. If you have Christ, you have a world of hope. The hope of glory, the hope of heaven. You have it all. You can't buy it. But if you don't have Christ, there is no hope. There is no hope. Well, we see that this comforts those who believe in Christ even at the death. Even at their death. Christ says, don't, don't worry about that. Be happy for those who die in Christ. Be happy, be joyful for those who die knowing Jesus Christ. Because we know that the lad, Paul says, the last breath I take on this earth is followed by the next breath I take face to face with Christ, my Savior. What a hope that is. What a wonderful hope that is. Don't be comforted by no hope, but be scared to death by no hope, but know that there is a hope and there are eternal promises for those that know Christ. For those that know Christ, believers, and there are no hope for those who die in sin and unbelief. Well, that leads us to this hope of glory. A few final thoughts on this hope of glory this morning. Christ in you is the hope of glory. The scripture, verse 27. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Not hoping for glory. We could stand out in the yard and hope for glory all day long. We could, we could stand and tell other people that, yeah, I'm, I know we're going to heaven. Ah, man, I've, I've done this good and, and not quite so much bad. So if you weigh it all out, then, then I've done more good than bad. So, yeah, I'm going to be in heaven. You know they're going to let me in. I did good, didn't I? And surely God would not send me to hell. Well, God wouldn't. You do. If you don't know Christ. If you haven't let Christ control your life. If you haven't given your life to Christ. You're asking for the punishment. Not God. God would, God would not have a single person go to hell this morning. G. Campbell Morgan said, it does not mean foundationless expectation, but rather confidence in something. A hope of glory. That hope of heaven. What's the reason for this confidence this morning? 
Well, the resurrection brings a living hope. 1 Peter 1.3 tells us that blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The resurrection brings our hope. That resurrection brings our hope. 1 Peter 1.3 and then in Romans 8:18, 8, he he talks about that again, and about or yeah, 8:18. 8, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. In us, who's us? Well, if you don't know Christ, you're not one of us. According to Paul, I'm going to ask you this morning, if you don't know Jesus Christ, I'm going to ask you to invite this living Christ into your heart. Just invite him in. We used to have a little song we used to sing as kids, into my heart. Raise your hand if you've heard it. Into my heart, into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. What a lovely prayer. Could you pray that this morning if you don't know Christ, just where you sit? I'm going to ask all heads bowed, all eyes closed this morning. If you could pray that prayer this morning to a loving and living God, I'm going to ask you to do that just where you're sitting. I'm going to ask you to invite Him into your heart. Give your heart to Him. Repent of your sins. And ask Him to come in. Just where you are. Simple prayer to pray. Forgive me, Lord, for I have sinned. And if you've been saved and you've been baptized and you've, you've been sitting in the pew for 20, 30, 40 years and, and something doesn't feel right, I'm not saying that you go out and you, you played poker till three this morning and then you caroused around with the guys and went to you know, went drinking. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying that, that there are certain things in your heart that just don't feel right. The spark is gone. It happens. It happens. It's not a judgmental thing. It's just asking you to talk with God and admit that to Him. We're not going to have you broadcast that out into the, into the community. We just want you to look to your heart and see where your heart is this morning. And I'm going to ask you that if you, if you have something on your heart that's drawing you away from Christ and, and you feel that you're not in 100% fellowship with Him while all heads are bowed and all eyes are closed, I'm going to ask you to zip that right hand up by your right ear if you would for me. Just right up and say thank you. Right up by your right ear. Now put it down. Oh my. So we've asked Christ into our heart, have you? We've asked Him to restore us unto full fellowship with Him, have you? Now I'm going to ask a third question this morning as a part of the invitation. This is not my invitation. I'm going to ask you, are you doing all that you can to serve Him? beginning in your own home, coming down the street to this church, in the workplace, in the schoolyard. Wherever you are, are you doing enough to let people know that you're Christ? You love Christ. He's your Christ. I'm going to leave you with those questions this morning. But I'm just going to ask you as we get ready to... to as we prepare to have, to, to have a hymn of closing, a hymn of invitation and dedication. I'm going to ask you right where you sit. If you, if you have spoken with him this morning, I'm going to ask you wherever you are just to take a couple of steps to that center aisle or the side aisle and just come down. Brother Earl, would you come and stand with me here this morning? You know Brother Earl. You don't know me. But if you would, make that decision this morning and as we come to our invitation. If you would just come, speak to us. Speak to me. We'll sit right down and pray with you right where we are. Would you do that?
brother. Our invitation hymn is hymn number 136, Are You Washed in the Blood? Standing, please. Playing, you just come, just come while we're while you're singing. Are you what? That hope of new glory? Oh man. Garments spotless are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Last opportunity. on just one more time just just before we leave this place today would you just check your heart give your heart a check if it's still beating you have a decision to make would you make that decision today while the piano continues to play very softly let it touch your heart are you washed in the blood of the lamb oh, are you praying for somebody this morning that needs to be washed in the blood of the Lamb.